<laughs> Damn it, Bruno. <laughs> This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> oh, anyway, Bruno knows I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> but it's Navi taking on Team Liquid. We talked about the strengths of Liquid coming into this, but we can't really take away from Navi's drafting either. Spectacular drafting team. They can yeah. play probably one of the widest array of heroes that you're ever going to see of any team, basically, in Dota 2. So, Toby, long time fan of Navi, as a lot of people are. Yep. What do you think about this matchup? What do I think about this matchup? Well, well, if if I go with a stereotypical view of me, oh, it's two zero Navi. Will be like ten minute game. You're just gonna like take a nap, right? Like you're not even gonna watch. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna win. No, no. I, I I love I love actually both these teams. Like I'm a, I'm a big fan of Team Liquid. I think as far as America goes, they need teams like Team Liquid that are stepping up to the plate and are really showing their stuff. Uh, at the same time, like you can you can kind of put Team Liquid into that like slightly dynamic team as well. Like you've got players like Bulbot, like you take up the mid solo, but then he's really great at the offlane. You've got Koifer who plays like slightly unconventional heroes in the offlane, but he's also very aggressive on the offlane. So I love watching him play and to see him with a battle up against a player like Funic, who can also be very aggressive on the offlane. And then you get like your mid battles up against Endy, you get your support rotations down, watching um, watching Fluff and stuff. Uh, I remember his Venomancer from a couple of weeks ago. Um, his timing is amazing. Like, it's absolutely amazing. He, he, he was walking around to Venomancer with an Orchid, getting perfect timing silences, big ulties off, and the control was just, it was insane to watch. I think Liquid really have a lot to show for this. I know a lot of people I know before were saying, like, Team Liquid, we, most people still rank them as number four coming in here, and that's just because they haven't proved themselves enough with their new roster, with, now with the addition of Koitfa, especially on LAN. Yeah, this I think I think they're yeah. This yeah. is their time, as, as you love to say, Andy. It's one of my favorite of your phrases, I must say. Uh, I've, I've started appropriating it and using it when I stream, and people say you're a genius, Perian, and I say yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, I think the Liquid are, well, they're kind of a TI3. I think a lot of people fell in love with them because they were kind of the hometown team. They had a great story. They had some, you know, they went they went deeper than I think people thought they would. I think Koik was a great pickup for them. And I also think they're a very smart team. The thing is, like you were saying, that experience of Na'Vi at land, they can always throw a curveball. They can react to what the other team do. And they never seem to get phased. You get some teams that lose a game or it doesn't go well, they get ruffled. I don't see Na'Vi ever getting ruffled. That's not who they are. Well, if you think about it in the sense that Team Liquid, we were talking about how they're the least experienced land team. Fnatic, they came into it one really bad game down. Like, let's be honest, that game, they kind of got rolled over. Yeah. But they didn't really seem like they were a little bit, okay, that game was tough, yeah. we'll move on. Good teams have that potential. They have the potential to just bounce back and take two games back to back and win the whole best of three. Yeah. So if anything, it's it's just their test. Can they pass it? Yeah. Now, if they lose here, it's not they're not out of the tournament. They just go down to the lower bracket. But it's still going to be tough because Alliance are down there waiting right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that either one of these teams wants to drop to play Alliance. Agreed. So, Toby's napping, it's fine. Let's look at these <laughs> picks we have I, first. I'm just chilling and enjoying this TriCast. We've yeah. got Clockwork and Wind Ranger for Na'Vi. So that will be, I'm guessing, Funic on the clock. Dundee on the Wind Ranger. We saw that already where he took the Wind Ranger mid, but it could be the other way around. <laughs> Why do you call her Wind Ranger? Because her so name sad. is Wind Ranger. I'm not reading it. I'm just trying to be Look, pro yeah. professional. If I lean this far away it. from the monitor, I actually can't see the letters anymore. Uh, she so will, she will always be Wind I Runner. I see Wind R. She, right, she, but she, when right. I see it written on the screen, I can't ignore it. I can't pretend it's not happening. It's, not like, it's not like when you I talk can. to me and see, I just try to pretend it's Justice not happening. Justice is blind, okay? Okay. I, I can understand your opinion here, Draskal, because really you can't change a Ranger. A Ranger is a Ranger until the end of the Ranger's days. Yes. Yeah. Something along those lines. That yeah. sounds like Australian stuff. Yeah. What's a Ranger? You two don't know what a Ranger is. No. Not a clue. Nobody does. It's, it's the words only redheads can use that describes a redhead. Oh, okay. Yeah, a Ranger is redhead. Okay. That is an Aussie thing. So how would we know? I you don't can know. Only it use it to describe sure other you. redheads if Nobody we're not redheads. Nobody on the redheads. planet hmm? says No, Ranger. no, you just can't use the word. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. So, but, but see, but if I can't use it, then why would I know it? Because it's the English language. No. Nah. No. No, it's not. I'm not buying it. Taking it. Look, you've done something. He speaks to the it. mother tongue. Thank you. Okay? No, no. I got to say, an Englishman can't speak the mother tongue because an Englishman just destroys the mother tongue. Oh god, this is tough. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. See, I, I got a really good movie I can I can give to you. And I don't I don't want to know about the movies that you want to show me, Toby. Look. 
It's a wonderful movie called My Fair Lady. Oh, I've seen My Fair Lady. Yeah, so you'd understand. Yeah. I don't want to get into movies with Ted because he's super picky. And he can trash talk things like Aladdin. Like, who does that? Yeah, yeah seriously, like... Sorry, I'm just like flip flopping right yeah, now. I'm just yeah. like I'm playing devil's advocate for both sides, and I just want to see, see what I, happens. See, I I don't know how you could be really like against Leah Salonga as as Jasmine. Who? See, the fact you don't even know that means you're, criti on. you're criticizing a movie without knowing Moving the details. On. Back to Dota. Okay. <laughs> movie sucks, and you're carrying. All right, on. we we saved it. Fluff's got his maiden. Yeah. Legit. It is legit, and the thing is, this could be a very good aggressive try lane, and. Team Liquid really like running aggressive yeah. trail lanes, <laughs> but don't tell Sam yeah, I said that. He doesn't like it us to announce that. But it's like Sam, you, you do it every game. Yeah. Yeah. Like people are gonna find out. It's not a secret. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when they run here as like Visage and Crystal Bait, like two of the most aggressive supports you and can like throw into your a lane first early three on. Picks. Yeah. It's like, oh, I wonder if they're gonna do an aggressive. And, and you're gonna do that up against a hero like an Enchantress. Like Visage is like the perfect hero to have up against a hero like an Enchantress in the early stages, because if you get the Frostbite out, the level one healer is nowhere near enough, and you got burst damage coming out from the Visage. And burst damage is the best way to bring down an Enchantress. Yeah, for sure. So, looking at Liquid's lineup, if Navi are anticipating an aggressive tri lane, what they can do is they can just put the Clockwork top and go for some kind of early push on the bottom with the Enchantress, add two heroes to it, and try to go for the early tier one. Promise, but, promise they put Clockwork top, he's going to get ganked up. Well, he might get ganked, but it's actually pretty hard to dive a clockwork. Yeah, Level he's one tough in to the clock. What are you going to do? And you imagine you have that ridiculously long juke spot in the trees where you can juke out like four different ways. You can use like one tango and end up in like the other team's well. But, like that's how intense <laughs> that trial is in there. So I think that it's probably ideal for them to avoid the aggressive trial lane because I don't see how they pick a lineup that can beat Liquid's trial lane right now because they already have an enchantress, which pretty much has to go to the lane. But the, pro the problem if you have that then is you run Enchantress into the enemy jungle, the rotation down from both the CM as well as the Visage can come very, very quickly. Yeah, and but if th they And leave, that can find you completely out of position. If they leave, the Clockwork gets experience against the Gyro. He might not do great, but he'll be able to get a quick level 6. And then you have heroes on the map who are pretty gankable in those two supports. Also, you have to consider, are they going to run all the way across the map from top to bottom to gank? It, it, depend, it depends how well you scout it out. Because if, if you push, if you push into your own jungle, and you come all the way up to, to the tier one tower down the bottom there, you throw down a ward, you'll see you coming from a mile away. So you'd be able to adapt before the creep wave will arrive. And Navi don't really have a lineup that would instantly be able to gank. Like you got a Luna, which kind of needs people to be with her and have Enchantress with her, and maybe they could run across a tri lane with that one. But at the same time, like where is Luna going to end up? Where is Clockwork going to end up? We're assuming Windrun is going to be middle lane for Dendi. Yeah. Well, after seeing the Luna pickup, I think Liquid might just want to change up their mentality here and just say, okay, wherever we go, we just want to be against the Luna. Mm -hmm. Now it's not about do we do an aggressive lane or do we do a defensive lane, it's where do we think Luna's going because that's the hero that we want to lane against no matter what yep. to make sure that she doesn't get the start that she needs. Because if Luna's left alone and you do a total tri-lane dodge, right? Yeah. A Luna lane with an Enchantress will always push faster than the tri-lane that Liquid has. The strength of Liquid's lineup is just being able to win the lane. So... At this point, I think Liquid are going to try to anticipate where Luna is going. Could you put Luna mid? Is she a hero that can go mid? Not really. I mean, you can, but assuming I'll, I'll right now... I'll forget the of Visage. I'll be very cautious about it. Yeah, because the thing is, mid is the lane that gets roamed on the most, yeah. pretty much, She's no matter where you are. Along, right. Right. Yeah. So it's a lot of pressure. Plus, she doesn't have the greatest range. The only thing that she has in a 1v1 that's considered to be good is high base damage. Mm. But her animation is not even that great. Mm -hmm. She's not that far range. I think she's like Zeus range, which is pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she, She's a hero that needs to be with others because she buffs them up as well. Yeah, yeah, like yeah that's, that too. Yeah. Like it's, it's the combination here you could have. That's why if you had something like a Vengeful Spirit coming up here as the last one for Na'Vi, you add those two auras on, then you add the early Enchantress auras as well, you could really start to mow down a lot of heroes in the early stages of the game. But at the same time, you may also want to be very defensive, so picking up something like a VS could find you in a very deep now trouble. Because you've got a VS stun, which isn't going to hit on Weaver, because you've got Shikuchi. You can hit CM as well as Visage, but they're not the ones you really want to be able to control in the later portion of the game. It's almost like they have to go something like a Bane, or maybe even just a Rubik at this point of the game. So this is a mid-weaver we're looking at here, right? Well, it depends. Uh, it could be a mid-timber. Mirana. It could be a mid-timber saw, or it could be a mid-weaver. Either I think works for Team Liquid, but it's going to be Andy Quake Mirana. for playing on Weaver, so it's likely to be a mid-timber yeah, mid saw. Okay. 
which means Windrunner also goes into support, by the way, for Na'Vi. Because Denny's going to take up that Mirana for the middle lane, so we don't get to see Denny's shackle shots unless Na'Vi is scoring with us, which they do do on multiple occasions, where they will switch up their heroes. So right now, if you looked at these lanes, you would just assume it's going to be Havorst on a safe lane farming up. You, maybe, maybe it could go the aggressive try that you're talking about, Draskal. I still feel like it's really dangerous to pick Luna here. I mean, you see Team Liquid's lineup and you say to yourself, their lanes are really strong. Yeah. Like everywhere. And the 1v1s, they have a Timber Saw and a Weaver, two great 1v1 heroes. And if they do try lane, CM Gyro Visage. Navi's try lane gets dominated by that, right? On yep. paper. But they picked it after the try lane was picked. So Dendi's got to, or not Dendi, excuse me, Puppy's got to have some like next level strategy of why he wanted to pick that after he saw that kind of laning potential. Maybe he's just that confident that he knows that Liquid won't lane again.